Hey everyone, so got a uh, bit of a different video I guess today, or not different, but uh, just some stuff that I've gotten. Uh, so it's going to be a kind of quick overview introduction of one thing uh, for the Steam Deck. It's a mod that likely I don't think really anybody has or not too many people have. I haven't really seen anybody else on YouTube like kind of making dedicated videos about it other than the company itself. So yeah, so recently I purchased a Game Boy Color myself. Uh, it was a clear case mod with obviously a new edition of a Color IPS display. So this is just kind of like my intro piece of like, hey, like what's your kind of oldest handle console that you have that's still working, whether it's original, modded, or, or whatever. And I also got a Game Boy Color uh, game cartridge or ROM cartridge. Uh, from AliExpress. I'll leave links to like all kind of relevant things below. Uh, stuff that's been that was sent to me as well. I'll, I'll mark out as well, uh, whether it's an affiliate link or not. Anyway, so for the keen eyed among you, you might have seen uh, this one here. So this one is the Ioneo Air 1S. Now this wasn't sent to me. No, I, I purchased this myself. I backed it uh, not too long ago and it got sent out to me recently. Uh, so the good thing about this one is it's got the 7840U, but it's got a 5.5 inch screen. So honestly, since I've gotten this, I've not touched the ROG Ally whatsoever. I've played everything on this uh, and I've played everything that I would play otherwise on the ROG Ally on this as well. So currently I'm uh, redoing Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, fully for the second time now now solely on handhelds and the handheld of choice that I've been playing it on right now has been the Ioneo Air 1S. This is this one here with the OLED screen 7840U. This model specifically has a two gigabyte uh, or sorry two terabyte two gigabyte would be terrible uh, two terabyte uh, SSD and it's a full length SSD which is amazing for something this size. Compared to the ROG Ally here, like you can see basically like its profile, like compared to the ROG Ally, like holy smokes, right? Obviously you do lose out on the screen there because this is a seven inch screen versus the 5.5 inch screen. Now, some would say that, no, you can't play modern day games on uh, such a small screen, but honestly, I beg to differ. Nintendo Switch has been doing it for how long now? And they have semi-modern games and they have semi-modern games poured into the console. Witcher 3, things like that, Doom. Yes, the UI is smaller, but it's not its not unusable in my opinion. You can make it better with certain games. Certain games have better accessibility options than others. Some will let you enlarge or change the color of the HUD elements or UI. But honestly, like I've played through High, F High Rush. I'm currently playing through uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 on it, like I said. And I'm having no issues at 1080p on uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 on this. I have no issues of reading text on it because it's so crisp and clear on the OLED panel uh, running at the native uh, 1080p resolution. Sadly, it is only a 60 hertz panel and the brightness is a little bit dim. This is 100% brightness right now. And honestly, it's not that great. And especially when it gets like darker scenes, uh, because it is OLED and because it can go completely black and turn off the pixels like you see kind of back down here. Uh, it can get a little bit uh, tough if you don't have the brightness settings set up correctly in game. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's just kind of like the quick intro to the Ioneer Wear 1S. Now, uh, to get to some of the stuff that has been sent to me, this is a 2 terabyte uh, SSD, uh, M.2 SSD. It's got, uh, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to ruin the surprise. Uh, so it's two terabyte SSD. If you are familiar with the previous video that I did uh, with Jay Matchin, I'll leave up like the the thumbnail or whatever links to the other video. But anyway, uh, basically they provide uh, ROMs on a hard drive and it's usually set up with Battlesera or they have Play Night or something similar. Uh, this one, honestly, I can't remember. They sent it to me a little bit ago and I can't remember what they said it was, if it was Battle Sarah or if it was something else. Uh, so we're going to find this out together. But anyway, so yeah, it's a two terabyte M.2 SSD. It's nothing special, but honestly, this is probably one of the easiest and coolest enclosures I've ever gotten. Uh, like comparing it to the Ugreen enclosure, Ugreen enclosure is probably my, my, was my favorite. You just pop it out like that. You got the nice little rubber thing there, but this thing's a bit of a pain in the butt to work with. So popping that back in, the only thing with these, or this one, sorry, is it will only fit a full length uh, SSD because it just kind of clips in there. So all you have to do is just kind of pull your finger back and then pull this out. So this is probably like the easiest one. Uh, actually, no, sorry, I lied. There's screws, so you can screw, you can manually screw in uh, smaller SSDs. But anyway, so yeah, all you have to do is to get it back in and I love this feature is you just pop it right back in. So regardless of 
what you might think of the ROMs and how they were gained on here. And I know that they advertise like some ROM server that you can get access to and get more ROMs from. Eh, I don't know. But regardless of that, they picked out a very nice hard drive enclosure. So I will say that. Okay. So now cutting to uh, the ROG Ally. Get the my Asus crud out of there okay so honestly i picked up this nice cool little uh honestly this came with the steam deck fan i believe that i bought on the temu uh, website but honestly uh don't use temu they're crap don't bother okay so if we see here uh i'll kind of zoom in here as well uh but we can see that there's a play play zone user manual i don't know what play zone is I'm probably installing a virus onto my computer right now. It's telling me to install the DirectX stuff. That's fine. Play Night is what they're using, I believe. Uh, okay. So, honestly, there is instructions for it. I can't really see it too much. Yeah, so they have Play Night and Retro Bat. What do you get for your money? Well, honestly, right now I'm seeing some PC games, so that kind of makes me not happy. Uh... Like, I'm seeing Grand Theft Auto V, I'm seeing San Andreas, Vice City, the remakes, I think they are, the Definitive Edition, Lego Star Wars, Skywalker Saga. So yeah, this is a 2 terabyte drive, and it's loaded up with a bunch of games. Uh, PC games, so System Shock, Vampire Survivors. So yeah, I'm not going to launch any of these games, like even Elden Ring's on here. I'm not about that. This, it's one thing to take existing PC games that you can get through Steam or good old games, Humble Bundle, wherever you get your games from. Whether you agree with the store's policies and distribution policies and taxes and fees and whatever, the, whatever, their cut that they give to the developers, whether you agree with that or not, that's currently available and it's easily accessible for most people i would say i would honestly again same with my last video with these guys i would just delete this stuff out of here and honestly go with some like just free up the storage and put more games on there now the reason why like okay like why is it good to get roms but not games that are currently accessible so for a lot of areas like these roms or these games these old games even like this old hardware like you can't get a lot of this in a lot of places they might not have access to a lot of this technology that the west and like the asian countries might and europe and whatever would have so they don't have like the repair shops they don't have like all the broken down hardware that gets refurbished into the, like these case mods with the ips panel mods and whatever so with these uh, ROM hardware services, like the hard drives that you can buy and then they have the preloaded ROMs, I don't mind companies doing that because personally, I'm okay, honestly, with people downloading older inaccessible games because they can't honestly access them anywhere. Even if you get Nintendo Switch Online, you're only getting a curated handful of selected games. So, after a little bit of uh, fiddling around with it and switching devices from what you can see here, uh, yeah, so there was a bit of a mishap. I was going to praise this little guy here because it has the two USB-Cs to the single, uh, and it says an uh, apparent uh, 10 gigabit per second on it. So, when I went to go plug in the power to the other uh, outlet, uh, the other... USB-C because the ROG Ally was getting pretty low as I was tinkering around with it adding games and making sure it all worked uh, so I plugged in the power and then it just kind of crapped out on me uh, there was no charge to the Ally there was no like it, the the USB disconnected and the enclosure the RGB lights here just completely stopped and yeah it just didn't work it was spitting out uh, power errors and voltage errors on the RG Ally and then I that's when I changed it over to the Ioneo uh, Air 1S here same thing it was shooting up voltage errors it like screwed up the Bluetooth chip it, it screwed up everything on the device and I thought it was honestly gonna brick or blue screen or something so I powered it off because it said yep the power off the sensors are messed up so I thought then okay I messed up the Ioneo Air 1S and that was only plugging in just the hard drive enclosure so i figured okay either the enclosure is fried and or the ssd the two terabyte ssd that they put in so i opened it up and immediately after like an opening up i could smell just like that flux like kind of 
shorted like plastic electronic smell you know the one uh anyway so i i was smelling that and i was like, okay maybe the hard drive or the uh the m.2 was hot but no it was it was cold to the touch it was stone cold so yeah kind of getting a better whiff of it it fried the enclosure completely uh so thankfully i do have other enclosures from you green uh and other enclosures as well but they just had to be the easiest one i do have one from yoda master as well but it requires a screwdriver so screw that you green anyway back to the actual product itself so going in here uh honestly you're going to get a lot of games uh you're going to get a lot of garbage you're going to get a lot of great games uh so anyway going over the systems again we got nes snes game boy like kind of we got all the major systems uh playstation one through three although there's some limited games in some of these systems so i'll go to something surprisingly playstation one we've got a quite a bit of games on there if you see there, we actually have over 100 games. PlayStation 2, I believe it has over 100 games as well. Uh, PlayStation Portable, we are kind of light, but I think it's uh, about 80 or 90 something games. So PlayStation 3 though, we get PlayStation 3 and we only got uh, Catherine, God of War Collection, God of War 3, Wolf Among Us, and that's it. So you can do favorites. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, I just kind of fired it around with it for 20 minutes, kind of figured out how to do everything. So you're in the main menu, press X, you can search, do a quick search, and this will search every system. When you're inside a system here, if you go to, uh, oh geez, I don't know, something relevant, Nintendo, sure. You go to Nintendo and you want anything Mario. Uh, type in Mario and you get everything and anything Mario. Uh, and that'll just search within that system, not all the systems. So uh, anyway, so you've got all those games. Uh, you can do the search in the systems, out of the systems, do a system-wide search, all that. You can set favorites as well. So if you go to Game Boy and you really, really want to play Adventure Island 2 on the Game Boy, uh, you hold A and then you go down to add two favorites there. Left bumper, right bumper, they will kind of go page up, page down. Uh, right trigger, left trigger goes from system to system. So you see here, you can just kind of cycle through. Uh, Nintendo Switch seems to work fine. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom, they they are running patches, but it did crash on me. So honestly, it's not the most optimized way to play Tears of the Kingdom. So I wouldn't recommend buying this just for Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, but they do have Super Mario Odyssey, Legend of Zelda, Wings of, Link's Awakening, Breath of the Wild. Uh, but I would rather play Breath of the Wild on Wii U on handheld because you would get a much better experience with it with mods and everything like that uh so anyway so just going to my favorite section here uh da, 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 da. so yeah you got sega genesis psp playstation 1 through 3 i already said all that so i just set up my favorites so you're gonna get a lot of games you're gonna get a lot of bad games you're gonna get a lot of good games so i just went through and kind of highlighted through some of my favorite systems systems that i've owned some systems that i haven't owned and just gone through and favorited some games so again you're gonna have to do a lot of calling of like games that you're just never gonna play because there's games on here that I would never play and a lot of people will likely never play but there's a lot of games on here there's a lot of jrpgs things like that uh there's all the final fantasy games here on playstations uh and uh, all the other systems that they were available on uh so just major titles like that they do have but then there is just kind of like not so good games just kind of padded in for like oh yeah we've got a thousand games on the nes we've got a hundred whatever on this system and that system so you're just gonna what you honestly do just plug it in go to the rom section go through each system and just pull out the games that you're gonna keep cut them put them somewhere else or delete all the other ones whatever and then just manage it from there it's a great stepping stone everything's kind of pre-set up for you you don't need to like read this tutorial or that tutorial tinker with this or that for the most part it just works in some higher end emulators like ps3 like switch you're not going to get the greatest experience with gamecube ps2 ps1 whatever uh, n64 you can do upscaling uh, so you can achieve that on the 7840U and the Z1E on the Asus ROG Ally, but that's going to be something that you're going to have to go to do and actually kind of tinker and figure out how to do on your own if you do get one of these things. But so it's not completely set up out of the box, ready to go, in my opinion, uh, just because it's not set up for the most optimal play. Oh boy. Yeah, so anyway, to kind of wrap up like this product alone, um, it's again it's just good for people that 
are just starting out, they're not too familiar with all the emulators and uh, all that, like where to get the ROMs, how to get the ROMs, how to set it up, how to get it to run, it's even run, period, let alone running optimally or whatever. But that's something that you can go and further tweak and tune on your own to get everything set up optimally or better with re higher resolutions, upscaling, things like that, mods if you're into that sort of stuff. But anyway, like for something like this, for me to just go, okay, I want to play some Super Mario Deluxe because I don't feel like playing it on my Game Boy Color because the screen is much smaller. The Honestly, this case mod that they did, the up button, and when I go up and right, it kind of sticks. I'm sure I could fix it, but like honestly, it's just not my, it's small. I don't know, it cramps up my hands. So why not play it on an OLED device? There's going to be the purists. They're going to go, nope, nope. Like even that this is, this is probably a sin to some, even though you get the nice backlight and <laughs> on the Game Boy Color. Uh, but yeah, like some people will say like, yeah, I know it's meant to be played on the original screen, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I just say play it wherever's most convenient and most enjoyable for you. So thank you again to Dream Action for sending over the RGB hard drive uh, with the ROMs. The, it's the PlayZone hard drive. Again, all relevant links are in the description below if you're interested in picking this up. Uh, the pricing on it, from what I remember looking at, I don't have it off the top of my head. It'll obviously be listed on the screen. Uh, I don't uh, remember it being too far off of a price of like a two terabyte SSD. Uh, it may be like a 30-ish dollar upcharge, I think it might have been the last time I looked at it. Uh, but anyway, it's basically just going to be, uh, is it worth your time? Is it worth your time? If you already know how to do all this stuff, you're not interested in this, honestly. You're not going to do this. You're going to do it yourself. You probably have your own collection, your own system set up, and that's fine. This is for the people that don't want to, don't know how to, don't know where to start, are just kind of getting into it. So that's what this is perfect for. Uh, yeah. So just again, be careful with the USB-C splitters. Uh, obviously this one's fried now, it doesn't do anything. Uh, I can't get it to connect anything. So just be careful which ones you use, where you get them from. This was from Temu. Uh, again, I don't recommend to use Temu at all. Garbage. Uh, anyway, I've been sitting on this for a while. Uh, this is a Steam Deck mod that somebody I've honestly not seen anybody else really kind of talk about or have or get or anything like that. Uh, so I'm very interested in checking this out. I still haven't used it yet because Steam Deck overclocking is not a thing anymore. So you might be asking yourself, what is this? So if we bring it up here, it's from a company called NUPP, uh, N-U-P-P uh, Engineering. You can find them at NUPP.EU. Uh, again, I'll leave their stuff down below. They've sent all this over to me. So this is their prototype case that they've uh, 3D printed to kind of hold everything. So don't judge the case too much of everything. Uh, but this is the actual product that you can buy. So what this is, and actually it's kind of perfect that I have this crappy kind of uh, 3D whatever uh, sticker that I got off Temu. So thank you for being so crappy, Temu. But honestly, you came in handy here at this point. So... I'm just going to give a quick kind of overview of what this is, and then I'll just talk about it, why it's been delayed, uh, what my plans are with it, and where it's going to be going going forward. This is a severe mod. I'm just going to say that right out of the gate. Like, it's pretty ridiculous, honestly, but I love ridiculous. And that's why I happily said yes when they did originally send this to me some time ago now. So I do apologize to them as well for kind of sitting on this for so long. So what they did send over was kind of like their basic kit, and then... Uh, so if you're comfortable with cutting out, this is a heat sink. So they give you a copper plate for the heat sink. You attach the heat sink. And then uh, honestly, I don't have the JSOX plate, uh, but where the old JSOX plate, how it had the exposed metal plate there. Uh, I do have it. I just don't have it on hand right now. So basically what you can do with that is just pop that out and then use this in place of that. Or you can cut out a square, basically right about here, 
uh, and use that with your existing Steam Deck case. You can get a modded back case if you want to do a different whatever. But honestly, I would just suggest getting a JSOX backplate and just doing it that way instead of mangling up your own case if it's your only case. Uh, but if you're interested in this stuff, I'm sure you're probably not too shy of doing things like that anyway. So uh, I'll, yeah, I'll just give you a kind of quick overview. I'll attach all their kind of relevant information as well. But you can see here that the circles line up with the screw holes here. So thank you again to crappy Temu. So you would attach that, that, and that. They all go there like that. And then, it, yes, it does just attach over the uh, heat sink. It doesn't, you don't have to take it out and replace it or anything like that. I don't believe I'll correct myself in video editing with all their actual information. And then, so essentially attach that on the inside and then you either remove, uh, you use the JSOX backplate or you cut out the square on your backplate. And then you will be able to attach a magnetic fan to it. Uh, so you'll get a little, uh, this is a little magnetic plate. So then you can attach this to it and you get your fan that's magnetic and it will sit on the back of the Steam Deck. USB-C power, you can get a Noctua edition as well. And that's gonna help reduce temperatures. <sighs> now, with all that being said, is it worth it? I don't know, I haven't used it yet and I'm gonna save it for the big comparison video that I'm gonna do. So this is for people that are just kind of into tinkering, you know, like if they're going for like world records on the Steam Deck because they do have a water-cooled version as well, which is fantastic. I think that's amazing. But again, with the not being able to overclock with the recent, uh, recent Steam Deck updates, it kind of sours things and it kind of like, it honestly just kind of took away the motivation for me to kind of do this comparison because yes, this will obviously help, I'm sure help temperatures drop quite significantly on the Steam Deck, but what's the point? It's gonna it's gonna quiet down the system fan, sure, but you're gonna have this fan going and you're gonna have like this big honking thing attached to it, or if even if you're docked, like whatever, right? But you're not getting any benefit from it other than maybe, maybe getting a little bit higher clock speeds from not thermally throttling or whatever in certain scenarios. But it's not gonna be every scenario because you're gonna be limited by what the stock settings are anyway. So you're not able to overclock to my knowledge. I haven't found a way to do it since the latest bit of steam updates. Uh, I'm waiting for the, just to see what will happen, but I am going to go forward with the comparison on this. Uh, so I'm still going to do the Asus ROG Ally uh, XG mobile comparisons and all that stuff, but I'm going to work on this as well. So I did go ahead and buy a uh, third steam deck now that I have on top of my wife's one. So I bought a 512 gigabyte steam deck, uh, and this is going to be the unmodded, basically kind of base configuration. I honestly don't even believe that the previous owner opened it up. I don't see any sort of tooling marks. There's some scratching on the case, which honestly, I don't really care about. I got it for cheap enough anyway so I'm, I'm fine with that so anyway with all that kind of said i guess that's kind of like a channel update as well on just what's to come with some cool uh little accessories that i've gotten um again i do apologize to nup engineering for delaying uh doing anything with this because I, I, it just has been a waiting game with uh seeing if i can get overclocking working again on the steam deck which is a real damn shame that i can't because this would be fantastic for it i think uh so again i'm, I am gonna do a full-on comparison uh, you can see here that there's the nice kind of metal plate there. Uh, and then this is a nice magnetic cover for when you're storing it and carrying it around. And then they do have uh, covers to cover the exterior uh, when you're not using it because you do have to have a thermal pad here as well. Uh, so that's what this is, or what the thermal paste is for, sorry. My apologies, but I'll be comparing it with the thermal paste and I'll throw a PTM chip uh, tape uh, bit on there, whatever you want to call it, pad. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that kind of wraps up like that whole, uh, the accessories update and yeah. So that'll kind of wrap up this video. Uh, honestly, I just wanted to have a kind of like easier, kind of quick fun video to space out in between the uh, ROG XG mobile content because that's a lot of like data heavy testing and stuff. And it's just, I don't know, it's fun to do, but then it kind of gets tiring and it's, I don't know. So, you know, it was just a little fun light video for Thanksgiving uh, weekend, at least in Canada. Uh, I know you Americans have your Thanksgiving whenever the hell you have it. I don't know, nor do I care because it's useless information to me, but quite honestly. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so uh, with all that being said, I'd like to thank my channel members, Joey VR, Rico1217, 
Moa, Darkstar, uh, Roy Wayne, Root Access, and our newest member who joined two days ago, uh, P3CMKR. Uh, so thank you very much for recently subscribing. Uh, for both you and Root Access, congratulations Root Access for being uh, a month now as the uh, member of the channel. Again, I'm blown away that e any of you are members of my channel. Um, but yeah, so that'll wrap it up. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions about the devices I'm using, uh, the INA or Air 1S or the GPD WinMax 2, not pictured here, but I am using that as well. Uh, if you have any questions about it, there will be a full review on the INA or Air 1S. I've just been honestly just playing games on this and enjoying the hell out of it. it it's a great 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 handheld in my opinion uh much better than the gpd devices comparatively at least from what i can compare uh with the two that i have software is just miles better than gpd uh anyway so that'll wrap it up uh again as always thanks for watching if you're interested in any of the upcoming content subscribe when it comes out unsubscribe that's fine by me hell don't even subscribe just whatever uh thanks for watching thanks for commenting thanks for liking disliking sharing not sharing as always have a great day